Welcome back. This, this video is a video that I've been wanting to make for years now, but I haven't because I haven't been living the dream of what this video entails, which is waking up super early. Because I have been waking up at 4 a.m. consecutively for the past three weeks, it's time for this video to see the day of life. A little background, I'm an epic snooze queen. I'm the worst with waking up in the morning because I don't know, I, I know snoozing for two hours with the alarm going off every 10 minutes is really poor quality of sleep, but in my head, because it's instant gratification, alarm goes off, turn it off right away, go back to sleep for like five minutes, wake up again, repeat, repeat, repeat. That's just, you know, that's the way I prefer to live my life for most of my life. This week's video, I want to share with you guys four real ways, non-hacky, non-gimmicky ways to really wake up in the morning because as much as it makes sense to trick yourself into waking up early, like you don't want to trick yourself. You just want to know like I'm going to wake up every day at this time and like you just naturally do it because from personal experience, no matter how far away I put my phone or my alarm or no matter if I put it like in a pot in a drawer in like the oven, I still will wake up, turn it off and just go back to bed and go back to sleep. The first thing that I want to talk about, and I think this is one of the most important things that's helped me a lot, is minimize the time spent making decisions in the morning to combat decision fatigue. So what this means is pack your bags the night before, your backpack, school bag, work bag, food bag, because I have all those bags, because I'm a bag lady, and lay out your clothes the night before so you don't have to think about what you have to wear. You just wake up and you put your clothes on. This is what a lot of people do with like working out in the morning, laying out your gym clothes the night before. And having a couple of go-to quick breakfast recipes that you can whip up. For me, it's either turmeric latte, which I just heat up milk, add in some turmeric powder, maple syrup, a little bit of pepper, some salt. It's really filling. Or I'll make lotus root powder, which I won't get into right now because it's kind of difficult, but I will show you guys. It looks really gross, but it's really good. You mix it with cold water first, and then you pour in hot water, and it turns into this gelatinous thing, and I add a black sesame and maple syrup. So to give you guys a little more, a little bit more context on what decision fatigue is, basically our brain has a limited capacity to make decisions, and once we, once, well, oh my god, I can't talk. Once we, ma mm, once we meet that threshold in making decisions, our decisions become a lot more impulsive, mostly out of self-defense. So it's like if you already made a million decisions in the morning of like, oh my god, like. You know, I need to wake up, I need to brush my teeth, I need to pick out what to wear, I need to pack my bags, I need to do all these things. Like, just thinking about it is already so stressful that you're like, you just won't wake up because you're like, I need to do all these 10 things before I can actually like walk out the door. So if you have everything laid out for you, everything's ready to go, boom, that's all you need. This is actually something that's been backed by the scientific community. A research was done with about a thousand judges who were deciding whether criminals can go out on parole and it was found that at the beginning of the day the acceptance rates where criminals were granted parole was about like 65% and it dips down significantly towards zero by the time it's like right before lunch and then right after lunch it goes back to the 65 and then by the end of the day it drops back down to zero so it has very little to do with what the criminals are either in jail and has more to do with the judges having breakfast in the morning and the more decisions they make throughout the day, they get like really overwhelmed and tired and their brain stops working. So they're just like, no, 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 no. Drops down to zero. After they eat lunch, they come back like, hmm, stomach's full, I'm happy, let's make more decisions. So this is one of the more important one of the most important things i think that has really helped me just like get up get out the door in less than 30 minutes getting up early great habit to have but even more important prepping everything the night before so that 
you can get up in the morning and just be like, okay, everything's gonna be laid out. Let me just, I don't have to think. I just autopilot, do everything, and then out the door. Alrighty, numero dos. Your night starts the night before. This is something that my mom's told me countless times. This is something that blog posts and the interwebs has told me many, many, many years now, but I've just now learned the importance that like, yes, if I wanna wake up early, I definitely need to sleep a lot earlier. Duh. So know how much time you need to sleep to be a normal functioning human and plan your evenings and your days around that. So let's say you need, historically I've need eight to nine hours of sleep, but that is a, that is a past life now. I'm trying to test and push my limits to see if I can get about like five and a half, six hours a night of sleep. So if I need to wake up at four, then that means I need to be in bed by 10. 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, yes. Ideally, I'll be in bed by 10. Usually it's been like 10, 30, 11, which is why I've been like a straight up zombie most of the days. I've, I've fallen I, and I can't seem to get back up. Help, send help. It's really important to plan your evenings around your bedtime. So let's say you need to be in bed for me, I need to be in bed by 10, or I should be in bed by 10. Then that means I need to be home at the latest by nine so that I can come home, prep everything, shower, get ready, do my skin stuff, like make sure, like clean the apartment, pack my bags, make my food for the next day. And one thing that I do is I set up my phones, do not disturb this thing. Do not disturb. It won't allow any calls or texts or notifications to come on. Do not disturb, right? Another thing is make sure your night shift, which is this thing, make sure it's on. The thing with mobile, mobile devices and laptop screens is like they emit a lot of blue light, which is something that will wake you up a lot and will mess your circ man, will mess up your circadian clock. What it does is it throws a layer of yellow tint light on top of your screen so that your eyes and your body is not being tricked that it is daytime when it is actually nighttime. Okay, number three. When you wake up in the morning, a lot of us, some people's alarms sound like... It's like it's the first thing you wake up to every morning. You don't want to be woken up and like, oh, I gotta go somewhere, gotta go somewhere, something's going on, right lights are flashing and like things are flooding and you're like running out the door, right? So what I have been using is... It's called Birdsong and it slowly builds up from like very quiet to like louder birds chirping and i feel like this gradual buildup of noise is just so much more pleasant and it like gently wakes you up as opposed to all right, so that's just like a, a little fun one. Last but not least, this is, I would say, the most important thing you need to do. Know why you need to wake up however early you need to wake up and why you can't wake up any later than that. So by now, you guys are probably like, why in the world does this girl wake up at four in the morning? What does she do? Why does she need to wake up that early? So I've always known the importance of waking up early. I've always known the benefits of waking up early. Your days are actually much longer. You actually get a lot more done. You're far more productive. You feel a lot better about yourself because it's like you accumulate these little wins along the way and waking up early is actually a really big win. I've known the importance of waking up early. I've known the importance of meditating. I've known the importance of doing qigong practice, which is something that I do within my spiritual practice. And I've known the importance of reading. So all of these things like I've been trying to incorporate some way somehow into my life, but it just, it hasn't stuck around. Like it hasn't it hasn't stuck. And so I've been trying ever since two, three years ago to like wake up at four and do all these things before work. And I've done it maybe like two or four times. And so I was like, ooh, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. I did it once and I don't do it for the rest of the year. And I'll do it again one time and I won't do it for the rest of the year. So what I'm doing, what I've been doing is wake up at four, get to work around five, from five to six, meditate for an hour, six to seven, qigong exercises for an hour, and then I read for about an hour and a half before work starts. And this just, it 
it sets such a good momentum and tone to my days that i got all the most important things to me done like right at the beginning so that throughout the day it's like i don't have to worry about having not done any of those things and when i go home i can just enjoy my time at home and i'll be like oh my god rowena you're supposed to do this and then you have to do this but like you don't have time for anything so it's important to really sit yourself down and ask yourself why must i wake up early and why can i not wake up any later and be honest with yourself you know if it's if you don't want to wake up early then like don't if there's no reason for you to be up that early then don't but let's say if you do want to think of all the ways think of all the ways <laughs> but if you want to really think about why and why 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 and why you can't wake up any later at the core of it is just knowing what is important to you what you value what your priorities are so priorities what your priorities are i mean i i say that okay i've been talking for too long it's important to know what your priorities are because if you know what your priorities are, you know what's important to you, it'll be a lot easier for you to not let yourself off easy. So if being fit is important to you, if getting more of your personal passion project done is important to you, if just you know making more time for what's important to you is important to you like having me time or you know waking up early so that you can make a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, sit you know on your couch read a book and not be rushed in everything that you do which has been so like central to my life it's like i wake up rushed i brush my teeth washed i eat breakfast rushed i run out the rug the, 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 the door rushed and then like i get to work and i'm just like oh my god like everything's just so right so know what's important to you and uh don't compromise you know just we know what's important to us, so we just have to do it. All right, so again, first thing is minimize decisions you have to make in the morning. The second point is, what is the second point? The second point is your morning starts the night before. Third, set an alarm that you'll actually be excited waking up to. And the fourth one, know why you have to wake up this early and know why you can't wake up any later than the time that you want to set for yourself. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Let me know what you guys think. Give it a thumbs up. <laughs> Give it a thumbs up if you're interested in the life. You found this helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions, thoughts, comments, feedbacks. So if you want to get in touch, you know where to find me, Instagram, or my email. I will see you guys next time.